rote memorization is surface learning. And this is a primary way that we teach in schools and how we learn sign language in classes. Rote memorization is basically, you know, we repeat that sign over and over and over again until we can memorize it. But that's really um, the surface level. And so the Norman Webb's depth of knowledge has four levels. And rote memorization is number one. It's super basic. It's temporary. It doesn't last. And um, it's just, you know, you're memorizing facts. You're memorizing vocabulary. And it's really uh, the least effective way of learning something. So let's go ahead and get past level one. We, we want to get past rote memorization. It can be effective and it can be uh, utilized, but it's not the deepest way of learning something. Level two is skills and concepts. So this is going to be when you um, have to put some mental processing into it and you're not just fed the information. Uh, level three is strategic thinking and this is going to be when you have to reason plan uh, find evidence and kind of prove what you're learning and then level four is extended thinking uh, and this is going to be research and work that is done over time and you know just like uh, reading a book like we could read a book passively but like the more we can really dive into it and highlight it and mark it uh, we're going to be able to recall that information uh, much more effectively. Let's go down to level two really quick. So level two is going to require some mental processing and you're going to be interpreting information. So it's going to take a little more mental effort. So it's not just this is designed for ABC, uh, but it's going to be uh, require a little more process. So maybe um, you're looking at a sign but they don't tell you what it is. So now you have to think about it and you may, may be trying to interpret it and maybe you're trying to figure it out through context. Maybe you watch it multiple times. And so you're putting a little more work and a little more effort into it. And um, that's going to be more effective than if I show you a sign, you repeat it back to me, and then you repeat that sign over and over and over again. So again, that's level one, that's rote memorization. Level two is it requires a little more work on your part, um, may, whether it's learning vocabulary or maybe uh, you have to have this like, English sentence and now you have to uh, convert it and make it into ASL grammar. And so that requires a little more work and that's actually going to be more effective and you're going to remember that uh, for a longer duration rather than you just memorizing it, right? So let's go down the le another level. Let's go down to level three. So this is going to be requiring strategic thinking, and you're going to have to uh, dig in and defend your answers with evidence and reason on it. And so this is going to be a multi-step process. It's not just going to be, um, here's the sign, memorize it. It's not going to be, um, here's a sentence, figure it out. It's going to be uh, multiple steps. And so uh, let's say um, you have to learn um, the sign for hippopotamus. And you could look that up on Google really quick, and maybe you'll see Bill Vickers do this, or maybe you'll see some other deaf individual do this. Or, and so, you know, you, you're trying to figure out and kind of seek the truth to something. And you're not just being fed the answers, you're having to actively do the research yourself and even defend yourself and say, these are my sources, and I've, I've, I've done all this research and I've found this is to be the most accurate, this is to be the most truthful, and that is going to be the next level, right? And then the, le the deepest level, level four, is going to require a lot of research work, and it's going to be done over a period of time. And this is the highest level of learning that we can really uh, achieve. And so this goes beyond vocabulary, and it really starts to tie into uh, both our creativity and our endurance. Um, so, you know, like, like language learning as far as like dif um, deciphering lots of different content. And we've talked about comprehensible input before. Uh, so when we were exposing ourselves to tons of um, uh, input, and so over a long period of time, so this isn't just I'm going to binge watch um, a bunch of sign language videos in a day. This is going to be a process, a set process that requires a, a long period of time. And so maybe you're watching uh, videos every day, or maybe you're having to put in 
personal research and you have to be more autodidactic or a self learner. I gave a workshop recently and this is again is from the book Unlimited Memory by Kevin Horsley and he has tons of different memory hacks that we can implement to me in order to like remember the things that we learn and one of the things is to be really creative with the process um, and uh, let's see if I can do this really quick. So like the first 10 elements of the periodic table is one of the examples that he gave. Level one would be uh, me telling you, okay, memorize these 10 things. Um, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, um, nitrogen, oxygen, uh, fluorine, and uh, neon. Okay, so you're going to take those 10 elements and you're going to repeat them and you're going to uh, uh, commit them to memory. You're going to use rote memorization and just recall that information. And you might be able to do that. You know, you might repeat that uh, 10 or 15 times until it sticks. But it's going to be really temporary. But if you can make that really creative and you put a lot of work into it and re research into it, that's going to stick a lot better. And so in, in the book, he has this picture that he came up with and he basically like copied and pasted uh, various images to help him remember what element was pictured. Uh, so uh, just going through the, the picture that he uh, came up with, he had a fire hydrant, he had a helium balloon, he had a light bulb picturing lithium, he had a pile of berries, he had a boar eating those berries, and then he had a, a car with the bun sitting in the driver's seat, which pictured carbon. There is a knight in shining armor in the passenger seat, and he's got um, that picture of nitrogen. He had an oxygen tank strapped to his back, and that oxygen tank, tank had a uh, uh, tube that went to a woman that had the flu, which pictured fluorine, and then in the background of all this was a neon sign. You're basically creating this visual element, and it, you're, you, you're engaging your creative process, and you're really you're hitting all those different levels along the way. And, you know, you're, you're memorizing it, but you're also, in, it's requiring mental processing. It's requiring a multi-step process to where you're thinking about each one. You're thinking of how you can visualize it. And then you take the visual image and then you're piecing it together. And you're uh, mind mapping these, these things. And so that's going to stick in your memory a lot better because you had to really put some work into it. And so if we want uh, to reach that the highest level of learning as far as sign language, it, it just means that we have to put some work into it and um, be creative with the process. And it can be simple things too. Like um, if you're having a hard time remembering how to sign go, um, I've had some students say, oh, well, it kind of looks like a squid and the squid goes away. And so, you know, uh, it's a good mental picture and you can do that with lots of different signs to kind of uh, help you um, remember the signs that you have been learning.